They said hockey couldn't work in the desert. They were wrong. We went from the entertainment capital of the world to home of the world champions. We have the entire city on the strip today. And the Silver State Sports and Entertainment Network is ready to cover every team on the ice, whether they skate in silver, scarlet, or gold. This is where fire meets ice, where skates meet the strip. Hockey in Las Vegas is just heating up. Vegas wanted hockey, Vegas got hockey. Covering every local team on the ice, this is Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Some say Happy New Year. We say Hockey New Year. To all the rink rats out there, welcome inside Hockey in the Desert Weekly. I'm your host, Vince Sapienza. As you just saw, the 2024 Winter Classic was an event unlike any other, a memory for a lifetime. Who were those there in attendance? As for the game itself, it's one the Golden Knights would not like to relive anytime soon. Now, unfortunately, here on the show, we've got to recap the start of the new year for the Golden Knights and the Silver Knights. We will also look ahead to each team's all-stars, Jack Eichel, Adam Cracknell, plus, as always, the Skating Rebels in studio as well. But we head back to Seattle, where the Golden Knights made quite the entrance to the Winter Classic. Keegan Kohler said, Kolasar said, I'm not so sure you can get more Vegas than 25 Elvis impersonators, but... I would tend to agree with them. A whole lot of fun in the lead up to this one, but once the puck dropped, not a lot of positives for the guys in goal. The Kraken scored in the first five minutes of each period. Joey Decord hosted the first shutout in Winter Classic history, stopping all 35 shots. I mean, you'll always remember that game as loser, right? So it's it's this really disappointing and uh, for our group, and we know we're we're a good team, but right now we're not playing our best hockey uh, all together and. We gotta, we gotta find a way to get more consistency. They're a resilient team, and uh, you know they play a little bit like us in the past few years. So uh, you gotta give them credit. So from T-Mobile Park back to T-Mobile Arena, the Golden Knights return to the friendly confines of the Fortress. William Carlson out with an injury, so in comes Grigory Denisenko making his VGK debut against the team that drafted him back in 2018. Now, while he didn't have the best game in the world, his fellow countryman Pavel Dorofeyev did, finding some chemistry with the captain and finding the back of the net to give Vegas a 1-0 lead. It was 1-1 after 1, but the game changed early in the second when Vegas failed to score while on a 5-on-3. They went 0 for 6 on the man advantage. The Panthers scored 3 on the power play. Special teams the difference in the 4-1 loss. Our, our best players get outplayed in special teams by their best players. That, that's who's on special teams for the most part. And from there we weren't able to get our game back. You can't dwell on the fact you didn't score in a 5 on 3. You got to get to your game. It's 2 to 1. You know, if we get back to where we were in the first period, I, I think we're fine. But we never got to it. We're an imperfect team. We want a, ch a championship being that way last year. So we better get our friggin' heads out of our, if that's what we think we're going to be perfect every night. There's not a perfect team in this league. And now in an imperfect way, the Golden Knights would ride the ship Saturday night at the Fortress when they hosted the New York Islanders. Jack Eichel scoring twice. Nick Waugh notched a pair as well. And the guys in gold snapped a two-game skid, earning their first win of the new year, 5-2. to two. It's good to see a few goals. Obviously, the goal by Pav there. It's a great play by Stoney and Stevie. Wazi, Wazi, Coley, and uh, Houds again and then uh, you know again in the third so uh, there were some good uh, some good things to like about our offensive zone game and um, yeah I thought it was just a good response by the group. 
Now, no doubt Saturday was a big one for the Golden Knights, but no one enjoyed it more than Lucas Cormier. The 2020 third round draft pick made his NHL debut Saturday night, getting the rookie hot lap to open up pregame warmups and doing so in front of mom and dad. Cormier played just shy of 20 minutes, manning the top power play unit where he earned his first NHL point, a primary assist on Eichel's second of the night. We only had one power play, so he obviously makes a nice play to Jack by getting middle ice. It seems like a little thing, but he does force their kill to shift, makes a good play, um, gets his first NHL points, so good for him. But overall, I thought he, uh, he, he played the game in front of him. He didn't chase it. He didn't get caught out of position. He's inside the dots, things that younger guys, sometimes things can happen fast out there. So I, I thought he process the game well in, in that regard. Yeah, right now it kind of feels like it, it went by pretty fast, uh, taking everything in uh, at once. Now it's uh, it was a great experience from, from top to bottom. And it wasn't just Cormier wearing the gold for the first time. Tobias Bjornfeldt made his BGK debut against New York just a couple days after being claimed off waivers from the LA Kings. The 22-year-old left-handed defenseman and former first-round pick got one practice in with the team prior to the game where he played a little less, a little more, I should say, than 18 minutes, going to minus one, blocking a pair of shots and dishing out a hit. Tobias, I thought, made some real good small area plays, smart with the puck, uh, put out fires with a good first pass, so to speak. Um, angled well, so he defends with his brain and his stick. He uses his body position well, but he's not going to overpower guys, but I thought he was in the right spots to do that. Liked his game a lot. Now the reasons we're seeing all these debuts is because of the laundry list of injuries to the Golden Knights, specifically on the blue line. Cassidy gave some updates over the weekend. Shea Theodore, Ben Hutton, Caden Korzak, William Carlson, all on injured reserve. Carlson is considered week to week. The Vegas bench boss also mentioned William Carrier is out long term with an upper body injury. Zach Whitecloud picked up an injury against Florida, though he is not expected to be out too long. Daniil Marimanov, who last played on New Year's Eve 2022, was seen in a non-contact red sweater last week, meaning he's getting close, but it seems no one is closer than goaltender Aiden Hill. Now here's some video of the Knights netminder with the team at CNE, Cassidy. Cassidy said he hopes he can be an option as soon as this week. Hill, who missed seven games with a lower body injury, returned last month, but lasted less than seven minutes before getting hurt again. He was placed on the injury reserve and has been out the last seven games. Michael for the empty net, scores! Icing on the cake here for the opening game for the Vegas Golden Knights. Goes across, it's a loose puck through two guys, and Gunas tries to play stick on stick. That's not going to work it as Eichel takes it to the net. Don't look it. Eichel with a chance, and he scores! Pass to Eichel, into the zone, shot, score! Stone across, Eichel, shot, score! Off to Eichel, wrist shot, score! Picks it up. His wrist shot. Score! Three released by Eichel. His 14th. And the Golden Knights grab the early 1 0 lead. So why are we showing you a Jack Eichel hype video? Not just because it's awesome, but because for the first time since 2020, the fourth time in his career, and the first time as a Golden Knight, Jack Eichel is an NHL All-Star. He was chosen by the league as Vegas' representative. He leads the team in points, and while he's excited for the weekend, he's a little unsure about the forthcoming skills competition. Take a listen. I look forward to it. It should be, uh, you know, should be a nice weekend for my family and, and myself. And, um, you know, get to see some guys I know and, uh, and try and enjoy it. I feel like nowadays, uh, you know, some some of the younger kids can do some crazy things, and uh, I have no idea how to do them. So, hey, if uh, if I'm involved in the skills competition, obviously with a million dollars up for grabs, I think I think it'll make it competitive. Time now for our continuing quest segment where we look around the league and check in with the Golden Knights of yesteryear. And how can we start anywhere else but Minnesota, where, or Columbus, I should say, Mark Andre Fleury continues to defy and deny father time. Look at this sequence. Down one, Fleury heading to the bench for the extra attacker, changes his mind and does enough to make sure this one stays out. The Wild would go down the other way. They would tie the game where they would eventually force overtime and then win it in the OT thanks to Flurry and this save in the OT period it was his 551st win of his career tying him with Patrick Wall on the NHL
NHL second wins list. And speaking of milestones, former misfit Eric Holla hit a big one the other night. His ninth goal of the season proved to be his 300th career NHL point. He would add an assist later to make it 301. Stay in New Jersey where another year one great Colin Miller scored not one but two goals. The first two of the season, his first two as a member of the Devils, and his first multi-goal game of his career. And speaking of misfit defensemen, check in with the great 88. Nate Schmidt ends a 40 five game goalless drought scoring his first of the season off the rush and it proves to be the game winner a story of redemption for Schmidt he's been healthy scratch uh, last couple weeks for the Winnipeg Jets he lights the lamp with his dad in town Tom in attendance and staying in Anaheim Schmidt wasn't the only former night all smiles Laurent Brossois leading the way with 37 saves none better than this one right here in the third the former Vegas Cup champ earns his third straight win and sixth of the season now, despite the ice, we are just getting warmed up here on Hockey in the Desert Weekly. When we return, we check in with the Silver Knights assistant captain turned all-star captain. We're going to hear from Adam Cragnell next. Stay with us. You're watching Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Welcome back to Hockey in the Desert Weekly. I'm Vince Sapienza. A day before the NHL All-Stars were announced, the American Hockey League had a special announcement of their own, naming Silver Knights forward Adam Cracknell as one of two captains for the All-Star game in San Jose next month. In his 18th season of professional hockey, this is Cracknell's first All-Star appearance in any capacity. The 38-year-old, who was named an assistant captain prior to his first season in Henderson, has appeared in all the games for the HSK, leading the team with 13 goals and six power play goals. The former Olympian and Las Vegas Wrangler has played in over a thousand games across the NHL, AHL, ECHL, and in Europe. Uh, it's huge. I, I never thought I'd be part of the All-Star game. Um, got the call from Scott Housen, and it was a huge honor. Uh, really looking forward to going to San Jose, play with all these great players, and a lot of guys I've uh, played against, obviously, and then guys that you get to meet from out east that uh, you might never, never meet before. So. Looking forward to it. It's going to be a great family weekend. And it seems that honor put a little pep in Cracknell's step later that night at the Dollar Loan Center. Tied at one, Cracknell proving why he is an all-star. Filling the empty net off an no-look dish from Jonas Ronbeard. Makes it 2-1 Henderson. We jump to the third. Tied at three, Grigori Denisenko. Line the lamp on the man advantage. His second point of the evening. One of three players with multi-point efforts in this one as the Silver Knights skate away with a 6-3 victory. You know, it's a close game. There's, we're going to have a lot of close games in this division, right? There's a lot of good teams. Even uh, even San Diego's a great team over there. they got a lot of good players. So, you know, I think it's, uh, you know, important for us to be able to, uh, you know, fight through that and, uh, you know, just find a way to get a win in the end. I think that's what good teams do is they find a way, and that's what we did tonight. So from the DLC, we go to Calgary, where the Silver Knights could not find as much success or goals for that matter in the two-game series. After getting burned to the tune of 5-1 to one on Friday, HSK played the Wranglers to a shootout. But in the end, House Henderson falls in the skills competition one to nothing. It's a process. It's a, it is a process. We're uh, one game away from our halfway point, so it's, uh, our game's building. I loved our response to that. We weren't happy with how things went last night. Um, you know, we figured we were going to respond today, which we did, which our guys have done uh, each and every time. And as we continue now with our Summer with Stanley series, we shine a light on one of the architects of the Golden Knights Stanley Cup roster, General Manager Kelly McCrimmon. On a day where thousands of photos were taken, there was one that seemed to have a little more meaning. McCrimmon posed in front of a poster showcasing his late older brother Brad, who had won a Stanley Cup with the Calgary Flames and played over 1,200 games in the NHL. A nostalgic day, no doubt, for the McCrimmon family, as the brothers both played for the Brandon Wheat Kings while in juniors, with Kelly going on to coach and eventually owning the team prior to selling in 2020. It was fantastic and, and we uh, wanted to do it in Brandon. I wanted to do something for the community because of course uh, I'd worked there for uh, 27 years. We had a public uh, event at the uh, Keystone Center. They had I think between 2,000 and 2,500 people that came. 
uh, to get their pictures with the cup, get autographs and that, uh, that type of thing. Uh, we then uh, touched uh, a few businesses in town that have been good to uh, my family over uh, the years and then we had a private event at our house. That was awesome. One of the things that uh, I really enjoyed was when you when you step back and you don't look at the cup but you look at the people that are coming up to it it's it's just incredible what a magnet it is and uh you know it uh, you know we took it to the marina at the lake for example and and you know people just uh, just flock to it. It really is a, a historic, uh, special trophy. Now, while most players and personnel just get a day with the cup, a quirk in the schedule brought Stanley just a few hours later right back to the arms of Kelly McCrimmon. Three days later, to uh, the cup was sort of in a travel day where they could carve out a, a little bit of time. We were able to take it to uh, our cottage, which is at uh, uh, Clear Lake, Manitoba and get some great pictures from some of the beautiful areas that, uh, that they have there. So it was, uh, it was really neat. You hope it's not a once in a lifetime opportunity, but uh, certainly uh, you appreciate it when, uh, when you do get your chance. Welcome back to Hockey Desert Weekly. I am Vince Sapienza. We have talked about the Golden Knights, the Silver Knights. Now it's time to talk a little Scarlet and Gray. And to do that, we have to bring in one of the Skating Rebels themselves, junior defenseman Nick Doyle. Nick, welcome to the show. How are we doing? I'm, I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, before we get into the games, let's talk. You just got off holiday break. We heard from head coach Anthony Vigneri Greener, who said the reset, the recharge is vitally important for, for a season like this, especially in college. I guess, how was the reset for you? How was your holiday? Did you get back home to Manitoba? What'd you do? Um, I actually went uh, to Wheatland, California, a little bit north of Sacramento with my wife, with her family for the mm -hmm. break. Um, it was good just being able to, you know, relax. Um, take care of some nicks and bruises and uh, get ready for the second half of the season. All right, so the second half of the season, unofficially underway, you just had a home series against Minot State, obviously did not go your way. 5-4 shootout loss, uh, overtime loss, I should say, on Friday, 5 nothing defeat Saturday, first couple losses at City National Arena this weekend. Obviously a tough one to swallow. What is the mood uh, of the room right now and kind of what went wrong this weekend? Um, you know, that first game was a hard fought battle. Um, it sucked out. It ended up losing it in the, the skill contest there at the end of the game. But uh, second game, you know, came out a little bit flat. Um, me, myself personally, and as a team as a whole, mm -hmm. um, we didn't uh, execute the game plan like we would have liked. But the mood as a whole, um, you know, that's a great thing about hockey is we get back to work on Monday. And unfortunately for ASU coming up, they're the ones that have to play us after those two tough losses. So. Yeah, and it's one of those things, you know, Coach Greener talks about all the time. You can't win a championship in December or January. And to put it in perspective, this was the number one team in the ACHA Division One that you guys did face. So a nice litmus test. What did you learn, I guess, from this past weekend? Um, well, you know, we, one 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 against the number one team in the country is all not uh, anything to sneeze at, of right. course. But the way I like to look at it is, you know, a lot of champions have lost a lot of games, mm -hmm. right? So um, we just learn from it, um, you know, fine tune some things in practice and then get ready for whoever's next. All right, now Nick, tell us, uh, before we look too far ahead to what's next for the Skating Rebels, let's talk about you, the player, mm -hmm. the person. We know your defense and what kind of style do you bring to the team, City National Arena? And uh, personal, what, what can you share about us? I um, mean, you know, I like to play physical. You know, I like to get under other guys' skins. You know, just bringing in whatever I can to the team in whatever facet they need it. Um, I like to think of myself as an offensive defenseman, but uh, also taking care of my own end first. You know, it's interesting that the, the Minot State transfer is here on the weekend yeah. that you guys play Minot. So what was that like personally for you? I know you said you know a few guys over there that are still on the team. What was like that for you? I know it's been a couple years, but being here in Las Vegas facing your former, former team. Uh, it was good. You know, a little nervous at the start. Um, but after taking a couple years off, you know, I think there is no better opponent to face. You know, <laughs> you know it gets you up a little bit more for uh, your first game back. So it was good. Um, no friends on the ice, though. Uh, caught up with a couple guys uh, for a couple minutes after the game. But other than that, it was all business. On the ice, is there chirping? Do you uh, like to chirp? I, I, I do. I like to partake in it, but I'll, I wait until somebody <laughs> says the first thing. So uh. <laughs> you're reactive as opposed to proactive. Exactly. Got yeah. it. Okay. All right, uh, Nick. Let's let's dive into what's next. Arizona State University coming to City National Arena. You guys split the series on the road at ASU earlier in the season. Uh, what challenge do they present? They're another top team in the nation. Uh, what do you guys expect this weekend? Uh, we expect them to come out hard. You know, obviously they have uh, a lot to play for, and so do we. Um, 
you know, no, no team ever wants to look to lose three straight, so that's mm -hmm. where we're going to get back on track. And uh, we also own one. You know, they took a game from us earlier in the year. They're in our division, so it's going to be a good weekend. Well, what is, the, what is the conversation, I guess, on a week like this, right? Because uh, not that you guys haven't suffered losses before, but, you know, it's been a while since you, you've taken a defeat at City National Arena at home. You're, you're still at home. You're getting yeah. ready for another series at CNA. I guess what is the conversation this week about bouncing back and, and feeling good about your game moving forward? Yeah, I think it's just uh, not being sorry for ourselves. You know, uh, we know that we're a top team in this country, and we just have to come out every night and execute. So it's just getting back to the game plan, controlling what we can control, and the rest will take care of itself. City National Arena, Friday, Saturday against ASU. It was packed this weekend yeah. against Minot. Let's do it again. Nick Doyle, junior defenseman for the Skating Rebels. Nick, thank you so much yeah, for no, joining us. Thank really you appreciate it. We'll me. chat with you down the line. Best of luck the rest of the way. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. We are just getting warmed up here on Hockey in the Desert Weekly. When we return, we are clearing the ice. Stay with us. Welcome back to Hockey in the Desert Weekly. Here's what's next for the Golden Knights, a midweek matchup in the Mile High City with the Avalanche, and then the homestand starts right back up the very next day with Boston in town. It's the start of five straight at the Fortress. I have a special request. Yeah. Can, you, can I get a video of you saying, Miss Huska, please excuse Luke from social studies? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Huska, can you please excuse Luke for missing class today? Just when you think you can't love Mark andre Fleury anymore, he goes and does something like this. Vegas' favorite flower, once again, a man of the people. And did you notice how Luke asked to get out of social studies, but Fleury, the veteran he is, gives the generic answer and does it for multiple classes. No class for Luke, all class for Mark andre Fleury. This has been Hockey in the Desert Weekly. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching Fox 5 News. Watch us live wherever you are, on our mobile, on our streaming news app. And you can also watch us on Roku, Apple TV, and Fire TV.